Hello and welcome to Unstitches. Today on the bench I've got this lovely Bernina Record 930 electronic on the bench here for servicing and I just thought I'd go through today and show you how to check and or replace the uh, capacitor in this machine, or capacitors. There is one a capacitor in these machines that is the, the reefer brand and is very likely to, to blow at some stage if it hasn't already or um, maybe it's been replaced since then but it's always a good idea to check. And um, the symptoms of a failing capacitor is a hissing, possibly sizzling sort of sound, maybe a little bit of smoke or it could be an outright bang like an explosion, <laughs> not really a big explosion but a, a small a bang, enough to give you a fright anyway, I know that for sure. And um, possibly a bit of smoke, you know, coming up through the up through this area, up through here, or maybe out the top, you know, through the uh, the gap up here in the top, you might see a bit of smoke. And you know, that's a surefire uh, indication that the capacitor has blown or is in the process of blowing. Now, uh, this does involve you know getting into the electrical side of the machine so just make sure uh, when you're taking the side off the machine especially the back cover that you've got the machine unplugged so you don't want any power going to the machine so let's uh, start by removing the hand wheel here if we can just get that little cap off there that's uh, sometimes you can get that off with your fingernails but otherwise just a screwdriver there just to gently ease that out there. That cap just clips in. Okay, uh, we just need to hold, stop the hand wheel from turning and undo that flathead screw there. And that will allow us to get the hand wheel off. The hand wheel should just pull straight off. It could be a little bit tight, it might need a little bit of persuasion there but uh, that's the hand wheel there just be careful there's a little spring there make sure that you know that doesn't uh, disappear but keep an eye on that and then just remove the screw here at the top of the side cover and then if you tip the machine onto its face there we've got several screws here uh, coming in from the bottom. So we've got two there to hold the side cover on and we've got two here uh, coming up from the bottom to hold the back panel on there. So remove these. You might find that these screws are quite often missing or they're very loose because the nuts that they uh, locate into have uh, come out of their little retainers. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. So those two are the same length, relatively short. Oh, actually, they're all the same size on this one. Yeah, some of them are at different sizes, but these are all the same size, all four. Okay, and we'll get the machine back upright there. And then you should be able to just pull the cover out. Just unclips from the side there. And what I was saying before about the screws is quite often these plastic uh, holders here, they see they hold the nuts in there. So, you know, they, these plastic bits here, they often break off. Uh, I think mainly from over tightening here, they, they don't need to be overly tight. But um, yeah, that's quite often why uh, you'll see the screws missing there. Okay, and this exposes the drive here. We've got the motor belt here onto the idler and then uh, the main belt between the top and bottom shafts here. Okay, if we come around the back here, we should now be able to remove this. Just before we do, I might as well remove the lid and make it slightly easier. We just uh, get our screwdriver, undo quarter of a turn, anti-clockwise there. 
In fact, you can go either way with these screws, either anti-clockwise or clockwise. It doesn't really matter. Just quarter of a turn either way, and that pops the screws out and allows you to lift the cover off there. And now we should be able to just pull that back cover from the bottom and it sort of hinges out from the top here, just pops off like that. Now this is a perfect example of a capacitor that is going to fail imminently. You can see some cracking there and these, pretty sure that one is a reefer and notorious for failing. You can see it's quite uh, cracked looking and we'll get a closer look at that in a second once I get the, the main board out here. Okay, so this, this whole board here has got to come out and it's not overly difficult to remove. Just one screw here. Little screw there. And then there's a clip on the in this other end here. Just remove the face plate here, just two screws. So they are captive screws, so they will not fall out of the face plate. Okay, and what I mean by captive screws is that they won't fall out. They're captive in there. They've got little C clips holding the screws, stopping them from falling out. Pretty handy. Saves you losing the screws. Now this clip is going to be a bit difficult to get on camera here, but it is right down in here. You'll just be able to see the end of it just here. It's a, it's a little bit difficult even with long nose pliers like these here. They don't quite reach in there. And even my tweezers you know, these fine tweezers here, reasonably difficult to get in there. If you are having trouble getting that there out, you can remove the bulb holder, can we, easily? Just uh, two screws here. Is that going to come? Yep. two screws and we'll just be able to move that out of the way there you see and that way I can get a pair of pliers onto that and I'll have, I'll show you this close up in a second how this works just pull that out and that should just allow us to pull this straight off here like that and the way these clips work is that that is poking through the back of the casing here and then this clip slides on and it's spring spring loaded as you can see there take note of the cable connections here pretty easy these days with uh, cell phones here just take a picture just for your reference, let's go all there. Okay, start by removing these here. Well, you don't have to start here, but that's where I'm going to start there. Those two. Remove these. Two there. One there. There is also another capacitor here. Y class. Now I'll explain the difference here. This is an X class, this one's a Y class. We'll have a close look at that once I get this board out. So literally just remove those and I think it's just two screws here. One there and one down in here. board just lifts out like so should be nice and easy and here we have the board out here this is the 
Yeah, there you go, reefer brand. Notorious for failing, especially at this age. You can see a big crack forming just here. Now, what happens is moisture gets in into that capacitor and gradually, uh, just with the electrical current in there, will cause pressure. And if you get enough moisture in there, that will actually explode. And um, I don't know if I've got any reefer caps. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is a, a good example of an exploded reefer capacitor. <laughs> That's uh, probably out of a banana, I would say. Uh, but yeah, very common through all brands of machines. So yeah, you'll see a lot of these if you're working on these. Yep, that's a 0.1 microfarad X-class capacitor. Now that, yeah, you can see quite a bit of cracking there. Okay, now easily replaced uh, with off-the-shelf capacitors, which I have in stock. Now the other uh, capacitor here is that one there. That is a 0.01 microfarad, and you'll notice it's got a Y there, not an X. Whereas we've got uh, an X there, albeit burnt up, an X. Now the X class here, they go across the live and the neutral connections and should never go between the live and the earth. And that's the purpose of a Y class. The Y class is rated to go between the live and earth connections or neutral and earth. So the, the, these are a safer capacitor. Uh, whereas if, if these short, you'll get symptoms like, uh, you know, running on of a machine where the capacitor's shorted, especially if they're in the foot controller. And if they're in the foot controller, they'll just short and, uh, you know, join, basically join the, the two cables together effectively, uh, bypassing the foot controller. And that's why you'll get a machine that'll just carry on running, even though you've got your foot off the foot controller, it'll just carry on running. Um, until you disconnect from the power. That's because the capacitor's short-circuited more than likely. Let's get the soldering iron out and we'll get these capacitors out. Okay, here's my uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor here. X2 class, 275 volt. We're 240 volts here in New Zealand. So let's start by uh, getting this X class capacitor out. Let's flip this over, it's the two terminals here, and should be able to just melt out, just melt each one of these in turn, and just sort of walk the capacitor out there. That's going to take a bit more heat, that one, there we go, that one again, there we go, capacitor done there. And it's installed the new one here. Now it's a slightly different footprint, this one. It's, it's a little bit narrower. So the leads are a little bit narrower. But you can see there that the board has the two widths conveniently there, like that. So we should be able to come right through there just like that there yes soldering we say soldering here not soldering okay just a little bit of new solder there bit of new solder crop those legs off there that's the X-class capacitor done there, just like that. Now this one, the Y-class here, uh, is these two legs here. That one there. Just work that, there we go. Nice and easy there. That's our Y-class. Now it doesn't matter which way these go in. Uh, this is a different footprint altogether. This one's quite short. You can see there that we've got the narrower 
option there, which is pretty handy. Okay. We'll have a close look at that Y class capacitor in a second. Okay. Solder that back in there. Just like that there. They don't need cropping there though. Oh, I might just give them a, a little snip there. Okay. And that's our Y class capacitor done there. Now you'll see other capacitors, that one there, that looks fine. You know, they're a, a different brand and are a lot more reliable. There's another one down here. And if we have a close look at the Y class one here, again, it's a reefer. Pretty sure that's a reefer. Uh, 0 0.01, yeah, so it's it's cracking up. Yeah, it is a reefer. There's the branding there. Okay, so they're the two common failing capacitors in a Benina 930 and other uh, models, I'm sure. So that's all set to go, all set to put back into the machine there. Pretty straightforward to reassemble here. Just sit the board back into the receptacle there. Now, before you screw the board in tight, uh, make sure that, that you'll see a little, just in behind here, there's a lever here with a hole in it at the bottom. And that, uh, this little, there's a little arm here. Just make sure that that arm goes through the little hole in the bottom of this lever here. Yeah, you might be able to see it just there. The end of my finger there is the little lever there. Okay, so just make sure that's located in there. And then you can go ahead and uh, tighten up the screws on the case here. Okay, so we'll start by screwing things back in here. Get the board mounting screws in. Okay. And then we can start uh, connecting our cables here. like so this one uh, now these two you could get mixed up just be careful of that uh, I will double check that just uh, be aware of the cable routing here just uh, push that push that through like that push that in and slip that clip just push it straight on Oops. Just make sure it's right on there. Yep, push it as far as it'll go, and that's on there. And then the back cover, basically just these two little tabs here, one there and one there. They just hook into these little hinge points here, just like that. And then just sits nicely just there. Cover here on. Nice and easy to work on these machines. I really do like these Benina 930s. And in fact, keep an eye out for a video. I have been intending doing a video on one of these for quite some time. And just do a bit of raving, because I do like them. They've got some very nice features. And yeah, extra. They're extremely well built and they just feel very nice to use. They are just a beautiful machine to use. So 
yeah, uh, at some stage in the near future, I would say, hopefully, I will do a rave video <laughs> about this one. Not this particular machine. Uh, this is a customer's machine, but I have uh, two of them. I'm pretty sure they're both in working condition. I'd have to check that out. So just do these four screws. They don't need to be overly tight. I think that's what causes the plastics to crack on these things as they just get tightened up too much. Okay, that's that. And the hand wheel. We've got this little sprig here, locates into this hole here. Just make sure you line that up. Push that on. The hand wheel screw there. Just hold the hand wheel, give that one a tighten, and then Tap there back on. Don't forget the faceplate here oh, and the bulb bulb holder. Okay, that's that on there, and then okay, let's get the lid back on here. push down on these spring-loaded screws and quarter of a turn either way there. Okay, let's plug the machine in here. Just power at the back there. Foot controller. And see what we've got here. Let's have a test so. Yep, perfect. Okay, no problem there whatsoever. So that's it for this one. There we have two capacitors replaced. Uh, about to fail, I would say, imminently. So it's good to catch that before that happens. Uh, they can make a little bit of a mess. A little bit of goo comes out of them and can contaminate the board. So quite good to get these before they blow. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thank you, as always, to my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we'll see you in the next one.